six year old went out to play in the snow and vanished. Nearly 40 years later, what happened to him is still a mystery. Kelly Holland had an unexpected day off from kindergarten on February the 12th, 1982 in Knott County, Kentucky. It's a small area, a very small area. After he had eaten breakfast, he begged his mother to be allowed to go outside and play. She initially told him no, but he kept after her and eventually she gave in and allowed him to put on his winter coat and boots and go outside and play and told him not to leave the yard. She said he went outside at around 11 a.m. She had been a very young mother and had dropped out of school at the age of 14 and married Bobby Holland and by 1974 the couple had two children. A third child had been born premature and only survived a few weeks. Neither one of the parents had a job and the mother had epilepsy and was on disability. The state removed the little boy from the, and the little girl from the home saying that she was not taking adequate care of them. Her parents stepped in and took custody of both children, but it wasn't long before Judy found herself pregnant again. Kelly was born in 1975. Now the two older children that had been removed and had been t given custody to the grandparents was not the little boy that went missing. Kelly was the little boy that went missing and he was born in 1975. The state of Kentucky doesn't appear to have raised any questions about the mother's ability to take care of him despite the fact that the other two children had been removed from the home. Soon she and the, her husband were divorced. Judy and Kelly moved in with her boyfriend in Pine Tree Holler in 1981. It was an extremely rural area with gravel roads and just a few houses scattered around the hollow due to the remoteness. Judy felt it was quite safe to allow the little boy to go outside and play. Now I grew up in a holler. We were never scared of the holler. And growing up in, in the time that I did, there was, you didn't hear about on the news all the time about abduct, abducted children or anything like that. But um, she checked on him through the window a few times that afternoon and he seemed to be having fun playing outside in the snow. She went to her neighbor's home about 4 p.m. to use the phone because she did not have a, her own home phone. She called her sister and the sister confirmed this even though the sisters had a kind of a disagreement later on and the sister would later on kind of dispute some of what the mother said. But Kelly was still outside playing at the time that she left. Now you think about it. She let him out at 11 a.m. and he was still outside at 4 that's five hours outside in the snow for a five-year-old child. I don't think so. Not if this woman, unless she is mentally ill or something, I don't believe the story. Um, when she returned home after going to make a phone call, he was no longer in the yard. So, where did he go? Did the boyfriend come home or was the boyfriend home this whole time? That seems to kind of be forgotten about in this whole equation. She assumed that he had walked down the road to talk to one of his friends because he had a, he did not have, they did not have a television set and the, the neighbor boy did. So sometimes he would go down in the evenings to this other little boy's home and watch the Dukes of Hazard. So she assumed that that was where he was at, and when it got time for that show to be over at around 5 p.m., Judy made dinner and went to look for Kelly, but he still had not returned. Now at this point, we're looking at seven hours. This little kid's been outside playing. A five-year-old. We're not talking about a 12 or 13-year-old child. Five years old. She was surprised to learn from the neighbors that Kelly had not been there that day. But now in another story that I read, she, the mother interviewed, said that they told her that he had come to the home 
but because it was cold and getting dark outside early and it would get dark outside pretty early in February and in the haulers especially back in the 80s there were no street lights somebody might have had a porch light there might have been a street light here or there in someone's yard but very seldom you know or there there were not street lights like you would find in a city I know Judy claimed that once she learned he had not been at the neighbor's house, she went to the home of her boyfriend's grandparents to use the phone again. For some reason, she said they refused to let her use the phone. It's unclear why she didn't attempt to go back to the other home or, or to go to another home to use the phone. By the time she reported the child missing, he had been, report, he had been possibly missing for up to six hours or more. Now, personally, unless some neighbor claims that they saw that child in her yard playing between the hours of 11 and 4, I'm not buying this. The Knott County Rescue Squad was dispatched immediately and began searching the area. Now, keep in mind, it's, it's after midnight. It's, it's probably 1 o'clock in the morning by now. This child would have been outside, this five-year-old child would have been outside for 12 or 13, 14 hours at this point, if he was outside at all. In February, in a snowstorm, they, they initially assumed that he had simply wandered off and gotten lost and expected to find him quickly. At 1.51 a.m., the rescue squad called the Kentucky State Police and alerted them that the situation appeared to be more serious, as they found no signs of Kelly. The first state trooper arrived on the scene at 3 a.m. The earliest hours of the search were hampered by the lack of manpower on the overnight shift, and it had started to snow again. By daylight, however, dozens of officials were involved in the search for Kelly. Most assumed the little boy was lost or injured. The area was so, so remote that an abduction seemed almost unlikely. Their main concern was that Kelly might have tumbled into an abandoned mine shaft. Judy called her parents to tell them that Kelly was missing. Their reaction was likely not what she expected. They seemed to think that she was involved and asked her, her father asked her, what did you do with this little boy? They told her, if we had just taken custody of Kelly like we did the other two children, he would not have disappeared. Initial reports indicated that a friend of Kelly's had last seen him that afternoon. The boy stated that he and Kelly had walked to a small store located down the holler at about 4 p.m. Later reports say that this supposed sighting is unclear whether this actually happened or not, and that the child may have gotten the days mixed up. No one else reported seeing Kelly that day. Judy believed that her Judy believed that Kelly's father had likely come and abducted him, but police were able to verify that he had been nowhere near Pine Tree Holler on the day that the little boy went missing. Judy's sister claimed that Judy had killed Kelly and asked her to help find, asked her for help hiding his body. But J Judy denied this and her later her sister later retracted this statement. The search for Kelly continued for several weeks. Police combed through the area of Pine Tree Holler looking for any evidence that might lead to the missing child, but nothing was ever found. They drained wells and creeks, searched abandoned mines, dug up several different areas, and even checked under porches and homes. One neighbor thought she recalled seeing a small green car in the area the day Kelly went missing, but without any other information, they were unable to determine if the car existed or if the car had anything to do with his disappearance. Police looked into rumors that Judy was somehow responsible for what happened to Kelly, but were unable to find any evidence. Several of the detectives believed Judy was involved, 
but also noted that several other people living in the area had criminal records and could not be ruled out. A grand jury investigation took place, but no one was ever indicted, and the investigation turned cold. Sporadic searches for Kelly continued to take place over the years. In 2008, detectives received a tip that Kelly had been killed and buried under a concrete porch of a home. Investigators dug up the entire foundation but found nothing. The case remains open and detectives continue to follow up on new leads. They do not believe Kelly was abducted. They believe he was likely murdered on the day he was reported missing and are hoping to one day get the information they need. Kelly Holland was six years old at the time he disappeared. He had a cleft palate. He was born with a cleft palate and has a scar on the side of his face from his upper lip and nose. From, And he also had a speech impediment. And that was in 1982. Um... I personally, my personal thoughts on this is that the mother and the boyfriend had something to do with this. I think it may very well have been a case of just an accidental death or the boyfriend could have gone into some type of rage and anger. He could have harmed the child as some type of revenge on the mother. Whatever this case is, I believe I, I believe that the mother and the boyfriend, one or the other knows, or both. I don't know if they're still living. That's been, what, 40, almost 40 years ago. Thanks for all the amateur sleuths for sticking around and listening. And if you have any cases you want to share, leave a link and I'll look it up. Thanks for watching.